Remarks by members of the Senate. The Senator Foaming. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I stand in order of Rosie the Riveter Day, the first national observance honoring the women who worked in defense roles in World War II on the home front, breaking barriers and reshaping the modern workforce, is being observed today, the first Rosie the Riveter Day, which came by approval of the U.S. Senate resolution on March 15, 2017. Most people don't think of Rosie the Riveter as someone who paved the way for women's equality in workforce. However, Rosie stepped up and filled the gap while men were fighting World War II. Many women were patriotic, but mo the majority of the women who went into the workforce were women seeking to gain high-level skills and salaries after years of being passed over for jobs. It was their way to send money back to their families during the war and help in the effort. During the beginning of World War II, my dad and his two brothers signed up for and volunteered for service rather than being drafted. My dad always said that his country owed him nothing, but he owed his country everything. My mom and dad were drafted, were dating at the time, and in a letter that my dad had sent home to her while he was in uh, basic training, he was in the 1st 82nd Airborne School for Paratroopers, and he sent home a letter and asked her, told her that if she would be, if she was in Baltimore, that they could see each other once a week for five minutes as he goes by as he passed through the train station. My mother had never been more than 10 or 20 miles away from her home. She took her $25 that she made at the dime store, and she boarded a bus and took a train to Baltimore, Maryland. She got a job in the airplane factory. However, she did not know that it was where it was at. She took the bus there every day with the windows blackened, and they drove straight through the factory and dropped them off for work every day. They worked 10 to 20 hours a day, seven days a week. And for three years, she never knew where she was going. It was not until many years later, after she was married and home, that she knew where she'd been working all those years. She's seen a um, documentary on TV that showed the uh, Glen Elm Markin Aircraft and Aerospace Manufacturing Company and what it did during the war. She recognized that factory is where she'd been working for all those three years and today it's the aerospace giant Lockheed factory or aerospace company. She helped make the B-26 bombers, the A-22 bombers and the flying boats. Every week she would meet him at the train station until he went overseas and after he left she persuaded six or seven women that worked in, that lived around us, her aunts and her mother, her mother-in-law and her sister-in-laws, to come back, to come to the Baltimore to work with them. They all went, took the same train and took, went to Baltimore, and they stayed in a boarding house for the term of the war. Then they came home with their soldiers to start their lives. When the war was over, my mom and dad were married in Baltimore after he got out of the hospital. He was a decorated war hero, and they came back to Britain to live and raise their family. Thousands of women responded to this call and left their farms and their towns and walked away from never being more than five or six miles, some of them, away from their home and loaded, those, loaded on those trains and went to Baltimore and other Michigan and all different places of our country. They worked tirelessly for 10 to 20 hours a day, seven days a week. And most of them were just girlfriends who married their heroes and came home. They built the America that we live in today. We need to stand in their honor like our World War II heroes. These women are part of the greatest generation. They're in their 90s now and they're dying every day without the recognition they so greatly deserve. Great Britain has given them the recognition, but America has not. Rosies are our unsung heroes that kept our planes in the air and our factories going to make the tools that the men needed to win the war. Working tirelessly all those hours and all those days, and I'm proud to be the daughter of Rosie the Riveter. Thank you.